What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Team ah. Pizza Plays Doom. I, of course, am Matafnu. I am the guy who man and draw. I'm draw man, and I'm looking on the internet for anything in particular. Um, or just for something no, no, more really. productive to do than this bullshit. Probably. <laughs> so hey, we're killing the legions of hell. It's been a while. Uh, yeah, actually. I, I forgot where we were and what we were doing. Oh, well, um, we were in hell killing well, demons. It's Doom, so I guess it really doesn't fucking matter. Here's the plot. <laughs> You're playing Doom. Ta-da! Right, okay, I'm about to show you everything you need to know about the plot right here. Uh-huh, that's a big pulsating... Oh, grab it, nice. Yeah. And it's hemorrhaging, and, good. And there you go. That that's That's everything. I you are now can't. caught up to the plot of Doom. Last time on Doom Z. Actually, Dragon Ball and Doom would go strangely well together. <laughs> he well, practically no, is would, a Dragon because, Ball character. Uh, I, not really, because Doom is about non-stop moving action. Dragon Ball is about <laughs> 20 episodes of screaming at each other while powering up for the final blow. <laughs> I've seen the videos. I love the videos where they take all the bullshit out of the fights and just show you the fights, and they get a six-episode arc into a 20-minute video. <laughs> He's and not wrong. Not a joke. <laughs> He's and, not and, wrong. And it's not even them bullshitting either. It's not like they were doing it as a joke. It's just, hey, here's this awesome fight scene. We're just going to take all the fillery talky bullshit out and just focus on the parts that are actually important to the fight, and they turned six episodes into a 20-minute video. I think Dragon Ball Z, at least the original uh, airings of it, were, were sort of like Evangelion, in the sense that they serve as a perfect example of some of the um, pitfalls to avoid when making an anime. For one, you need to understand that a manga and an anime are two completely different formats. What works in one doesn't necessarily work in the other. Long little talky bits in the middle of the fight are one of those things. Unlike JoJo, where you see that pose in that panel, draw that pose in every single animation frame, and you will do it perfect. <laughs> well, I mean, it depends on what you're going for and stuff, and, you know, it, it's a matter of taking your quips to the right degree and... <laughs> Five minutes. <laughs> yes, yeah, seriously. In fact, if I may go on a rant, because I loved ranting about stuff. If, sorry for interrupting. No, no, go ahead. The title of this episode has to be Demon Balls. <laughs> we can make this happen. <laughs> if we it has get... been decided, and now you may rant. <laughs> I'll add to that. The, the title card for this episode has to be like Doom Guy cross chopping his crotch, and he has two Dragon Balls hanging there. All right, you're gonna have to draw that for me because I don't think the maid can put that together. Her and I will do a collab. What's her <laughs> DeviantArt account? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, Dragon Ball is fat. Well, to be uh, specific. Uh, hold on, check this out for just a second. You need to remove each lens carefully. Release the hinges. Oh my god. Yeah! Fuck instructions! Destroy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Oh my god. Man, fuck your company. It has to do with hell. I don't care how you guys get out of this. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to send Earth into another energy crisis for a couple decades. But hey, at least the health problem has been solved. Oh no, don't worry. We can just get more unobtainium from the planet with the Navi. You know, <laughs> Avatar. Avatar is such a colorful move. Oh, I love Bending Air. Yeah, that's a great show. It's a wonderful show. But I'll talk about that later. So Dragon Ball Z. For me, the biggest problem Dragon Ball Z has is the fact that almost nothing really matters when you really think about it. You can just wish everyone back, but they destroy the Dragon Balls! There's a whole planet of dudes who can make Dragon Balls. Just get one of those fuckers on standby and say, Hey, they blew up the planet again. Can we wish back Earth? Uh, I'm sorry, that's the 16th time, we're sorry, but... You know... 
It's like death from Family Guy. You have a credit limit on how many times you can send yourself backwards through time and fix the mistake. It, exactly. It, it's pretty much what happens. It's Earth gets attacked by the strongest guy in the universe, even though the last guy was the strongest guy in the universe. They fight, people die, then they go, well, you know, but instead of going, you know, we should really band together to prevent this from ever happening again. This resurrecting of our planet and France should be as our second, or in this case, third chance at a peaceful existence. We need to really think about how to prevent this madness from happening again. Nope, it's, yeah, everyone's back to life. Let's have a barbecue. Yeah. Uh, you realize you just watched your friends and family die. Barbecue. It, it's a barbecue. Uh, no sense of trauma or loss. Yeah, chicken. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Vegeta, let's go train. Fuck off. All right. Yeah. Uh, you realize he... He's watched his friends and family die. He's He killed one of his friends. No no, talking with them about... Let's, let, 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 let's go talk to Master Roshi. Oh, he's hitting on Bulma again. When will he ever learn? You know, there's... No, it's almost too lighthearted for... I know it's just a fun, lighthearted series, and I will always enjoy it. I mean, if one of you said... I have a DVD of Dragon Ball Z filler. I'd say let's watch that right now. <laughs> I'm just adding that disclaimer. I love Dragon Ball Z. Just, but I just don't... wait. Now that you've said all of this, we're going to get the film theory in about a week or so. Is everyone <laughs> is everyone in the Dragon Ball universe in denial? They might as well be, because no one ever thinks, wait, we're getting faced with another alien invasion. Okay, Shenron, we want you to wish their ship into an asteroid field or into the sun. That's technically not us killing them directly, and that's completely within your power. It's, I always, I, if we ever, when when we get around to the to the show idea we had of how I would do it, I have a great idea for how I would do Dragon Ball, and that's, and I would actually, what I'd like, to, okay, what I'd like to do with Dragon Ball is just, honestly, let's do it. I know this is going to sound weird, but do it more like an American comic where everyone has a contributing role. Huh. Um, that's one of the things that made... Well, go on. One of the things I liked about the Dragon Ball series that was really disappointing in Dragon Ball Z is exactly that. In Dragon Ball, all of the characters contributed somehow to things. It was still about Goku and Balma, but even more so Goku as it was going on, which is weird because of the original story that it was a... Not really... It's not really a remake or a parody. I don't know what to call it, but it's based on a Chinese myth. It's It was inspired by a Journey to the West, yes, in many aspects. Yeah. yeah. But they changed the Buddhist monk to a whiny teenage girl because, eh, why the fuck not? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But, um... Tish? Oh, oh yeah, but... In Dragon Ball, everyone had a contributing role. Everyone had some way, shape, or form. Because they were... In Dragon Ball, it was actually... Hey, there are these mystical orbs called Dragon Balls that grant your wish. Let's go find them. Let's go make a wish. Bulma was like, I want all the strawberries in the world. And then her wish was, I want to find a real man to marry. And Goku was, all right, let's go fight. And the real, and a lot of the conflicts came from not so much who was the strongest, but who was going to get the Dragon Balls and why. Mm -hmm. Emperor Pilaf was their first villain, and he went into world domination. Let's stop that guy. Did Seems we ever... like a good idea. I didn't see nearly as much of Dragon Ball as I did of Z. Did we ever encounter the prisoner's dilemma situation in that show? Like, you started getting closer and closer to the Dragon Balls, and then even amongst the the heroic team, everybody was kind of, like, uh, looking at each other leerily, like, okay, who's going to get this wish? Sadly, no. Because for the most part, the it's like Hidden in the Truth said, it was mostly Bulma and Goku as the protagonist, and Goku was just going along with the, rock, along with the ride. His whole ordeal was, I want to go fight people and get stronger. And Bulma, was, and Bulma was the one wanting the wish. Yamcha was just there because he was having a good time fighting Goku. And yeah, that's also a funny part. Yamcha used to kick Goku's ass. Mm, I remember that, actually. 
you know, back, a cool dude. back in the day when somebody other than a Saiyan could actually contribute. Exactly. And, it, and actually, speaking of the prisoner's dilemma, they all became friends because they were all basically caught in prison by Emperor Pilaf. <laughs> I don't, think anybody's, so, I don't think anybody's ever said it than Dragon Ball Z abridged. Remember when we used to do things? Oh, yeah, that was, that was yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Remember and, the Red Ribbon Army? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It was good times, man. And King Piccolo? Yeah, sure, yeah. What happened to Launch? Who? Who? Speaking of Launch, she gets a bizarre cameo, but it works. Basically, we see her at the bar, drunk, but later in the series, we see she actually has a job now. She's a trucker. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, she just she just steps out of a, an 18-wheeler, and after everyone's heard, got the call to raise their arms up to give Goku the spirit bomb energy, she just steps out of a truck going, Yeah! Why do I remember <laughs> this? It was one of the, sorry if my scream was ear-piercing. No, no, you're fine. <laughs> There you are, you little bastard. Okay, what upgrade am I going to get this time? I'm thinking... But, uh, yeah, it was basically the final battle. They're fighting Kid Buu, and we need a spear bomb. Why? It destroys evil. Okay, cool. Let's get everyone to do this. We just wished back planet Earth. Everyone, give us your damn energy. Now. You say, you got something to say to the truth? It goes back to what I was talking about, how Goku's actually not all that bright in a fight when you get right down to it. <laughs> You're not wrong. Because he in the Frieza arc, which was supposed to be the show, you know, he destroyed this thing that destroyed planets and was feared across the whatever and everything, and he won that fight like hands down. It was ridiculous. He didn't. He wasn't able to beat Cell. That was Gohan. Mm -hmm. And defeating Boo required him to just have the thing be distracted long enough for everyone in the world to give him the power for the attack to destroy it. Which isn't really him winning the fight. Huh. <laughs> and the funny part is, during that bombing, that spirit bombing, everyone in Hell is going like, "Yeah, go get him, Goku! Yeah, you're the real hero!" And Frieza. Is just standing there, arms crossed, going, Really? This is how it's ending? <laughs> Why does this not surprise me? <laughs> and so, yeah, that's, that's the thing. I love Goku. He's a great character, but he's not the dude on the front lines. <laughs> well, I mean, he is. I forgot about that whole thing, the, the home for infinite losers. Yeah, it, Heffel, because they can't say hell. <laughs> But yeah, and it's just one of those. I find it funny all the people bitching about Goku didn't beat Superman. Could he eventually? Yeah. I completely agree with the end of that analysis that seems to be ignored by most of the people complaining that yes, eventually Goku could get powerful enough to win the fight somehow because that's just what the character does. But he hasn't achieved that at all yet. And, you know. The idea that Superman's a terrible character because he's boring and overpowered. So if Goku's powerful enough to defeat him, does that mean he's the worst character ever? For being boring and overpowered? Is that what you're saying? Because I'm lost. <laughs> As a I matter of fact... I think the name of Goku's new form is what bugs me the most. Because if you're a god, you can do anything. Uh, not true. That's, Actually, well, that's just, it, to me, that's what that term means. You know me. I'm incredibly literal. Everything means one thing to me. If well, you're a god, you should be like Tenshi's true form. You know what I mean? Eastern gods and Western gods are different, and the nature of their abilities are different. You have to consider in the Greek that you had a god who controlled the sun, and that's what his powers were based on. Helios, yeah. Right, and etc., cetera, etc., cetera. so it depends on which culture and which religion you're going with with what the god actually is. You know, a god could just be someone who is way beyond a mortal man, or a god could actually be someone who just blinks things into existence for kicks, you know? Hmm. I mean, the original... Warning. 
the Flash is considered. Oh, God this tier. guy's new. Ooh, he's flying and killing you with flingy things. A summoner, yes, is this guy's name. Right, I'm just being really with okay, whatever, Killy. Oh, yeah, no, the Flash is God tier because he can move so well, no, that's a bad example because he can do the whole vibrate the reality bullshit, but um I think of a video game example of what I'm getting at instead of comic books because I always end up going to comic books. Well, technically, we are talking about a comic book character. True enough, I'm long of the comic books, but um, well, I mean, hell, Goku actually even is god tier. Again, I like to go to the end of the Freeze arc as the best example of the most powerful Goku because that's where he just curb stomps him. Mm -hmm. Yep, and the ultimate form that was supposed to be the ultimate form actually lives up to that before the studio forced him to continue writing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gotta keep upping the ante. You know, so that, that it's one of the things that it turned me off the series a little bit because of the fact that it was, and you could tell he was, it was like, you know, gotta figure out how to make this more, which undoes how badass this all was when I originally did it, because now the ultimate thing is been made moot uh, but you i know, can't Goku believe the that, the, is... that the legendary super saiyan has been reduced to a child's play toy that is the most succinct representation he, he, he's a god he can shrug off the attacks coming at him destroy the thing with the power that he has he's you know nearly invulnerable to normal even before he goes super saiyan just getting hit and it's just like whatever you know? Mm -hmm. Not even yeah. caring about the attacks. Um, the abridged version I remember better because I've seen it more recently, but this where he's just like, sure, have you guys seen him? <laughs> <laughs> just not doing anything. That would be considered a god in some mythology, but then you've got, and again, I'll just go comic books because fuck it, Dr. Manhattan who literally just thinks things into destruction mm -hmm. with no effort and can literally not actually be physically harmed by anything at all. Those are totally different tiers of power, but both could qualify as a god, depending on which way you're perceiving it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Christian mythology, there is one god that's more powerful than anything, but then you go back to the Greeks, where the god, or, or Thor, the god of thunder and storms, and Loki, who could do the magic and stuff, but they were all somewhat equal and had ups and downs on each other and all of that, and their power levels... Well, great enough to completely reshape the world, we're still not infinite. They had Ragnarok and all that to worry about. Mm. Things that even they were... I don't know if a frame's the right word, but you know what I mean. And so, God has a lot of meanings, and it's one of those things that when you hear he, he's God, Goku, a lot of people just go with the Christian version, where it's just all-powerful, all-and-everything kind of thing, and it's really closer to Norse, I think. Mm. And that it's stupidly powerful and puny little mortals are kind of like less than ants. But at the same time, there are still weaknesses within there. Hmm. Whatever. I mean, one of the Norse mythology, Loki, there was a plant. and It's a neat little story, and we trying to paraphrase it. I'm probably going to fuck it up. But um, the re one of the reasons 13 is considered unlucky or sort of tied into it. Um, one of the Norse gods, and fuck me, I don't know his name, but he was considered, like, the most beautiful thing in existence, and so... Narcissus? The mother would... No, not that one. That's not, not Norse. Um, I don't think. No, not... But, no, yeah, that's not Norse, that's Greek. In Norse mythology, Loki and things, um, he was jealous of the popularity, and it begins with a B, and I cannot remember it, but, um... Bacchus? The mother at everything in the world to not harm this guy. And everything agreed because everyone loved him except Loki who was jealous so they were all having a game of throwing things at him in celebration of the fact that nothing would hurt him except for the mother forgot to ask one little plant because uh, she thought it was too insignificant to worry about so Loki tied it to an arrow and tricked a blind god into shooting him with the arrow and killing him because it was the one thing that could still hurt him 
Mm. Going with the idea that, and there was no, they couldn't bring him back unless everyone agreed. The Queen of Hell, even though she kind of wanted to, everyone in existence had to agree to send him back or he couldn't be brought back. So they're stupidly powerful, but still had weaknesses and limits, mm. is what I'm getting at. And I completely fucked that up, and I'm sorry to people who stu- actually have studied Norse mythology better than me. Um, <laughs> it's uh, really... No, it's uh, fine. I get the, it's, I get the idea. <laughs> interesting and very bizarre series of stories... Um, and we were having a discussion about how it seems like Loki doesn't actually know what prank means because, like, the time that um, he decided to prank the Valkyries by um, mating with one of the horses, one of their glorious war horses, as the female horse, and then he gave birth, and that six legged horse ended up becoming Odin's horse. And it's just like, imagine you're saying, Oh, gotcha! I'm pregnant with a horse! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else trying to figure out how this is a prank on. Is this them. a prank? <laughs> oh my god. Loki was the original YouTube prank channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That is a great analysis. It's just a prank, (laughs) Odin. It's just a prank. Uh, Loki, I don't think you understand what prank means. (laughs) Um, Of course I don't. You haven't invented English yet. (laughs) In fact, coming back to it, sorry. I love that line. I think we've actually spent a lot of time on this episode, so um, next time on on Team Pizza Plays Doom... We just talked right the fuck over each other. <laughs> Go ahead, I'll <laughs> wait. Uh, no, next time on Demon Balls, will Doom Guy stop the forces of hell? Next episode, Doom Guy stops the forces of hell. Tune in. I'm Kyle Haber. <laughs>